here we go. This is an adaptation of Kendall Haven's work, who developed the, the um, influence potential equation. He talks about the eight elements of story. I think it's a bit cumbersome. It's a bit hard to use. I've boiled it down to five. <clears throat> Let's go through them. Element number one is the protagonist. Now there's a couple of things we need to know about this. Stories are about an individual. You cannot tell a story about an organisation. The board decided that we needed to... No. You need to choose the individuals who I can empathise with, who is going to head up this story. We need to identify and empathise with them. They're the point of view character. And critically, as audience, we feel what the protagonist feels. That's how the emotion in the story translates. Um, one of the things that's important about understanding how the, how the protagonist affects the audience is that in many stories that you tell, there is a choice of who will be the protagonist of the story. Take the big Ben Bowen story. You could choose to tell that with Ben as the protagonist, but in that telling, he's not. Who's the protagonist? The, protagonist. the father. Why is it more effective? Because the audience you're talking with um, for a story like this is more likely to be an adult audience. And the complexity of the story, the real struggle of the story, Ben doesn't struggle in that story. You know the father makes that poignant statement about he, he doesn't know what I know, that he's dying. It's the father who's in real pain, who's struggling. Which brings us to element two. Stories are about people struggling. Struggling to overcome obstacles in order to reach goals. Um, a classic error in leadership storytelling that I see from CEOs is they get up and tell a personal story in which everything happens as a triumph and it shows them in a very good light. And you watch the audience, because I often watch the audience rather than the storyteller and you'll see this. Because I don't care. I don't care how well things went for you. Sorry. I do when I know you've had to struggle to get to the point where they went well. Then I'm really rooting for you, right? But we connect with others through our struggles, through suffering with, which is what compassion and empathy both mean at their root, suffering with. Um, this is why we empathise deeply with characters. So the, the gold star of this goes to J.K. Rowling for the Harry Potter series, mm -hmm. which um, if you've seen the films or read the books, um, my <laughs> Harry Potter has such a hard bloody time. Think about this. He's an orphan. His parents were killed by the most powerful and evil wizard in existence. He's then farmed out to his uncle and aunt who hate him and keep him under the stairs with the spiders, spoil his cousin while giving him a smelly sock for his birthday if he gets that. Everything goes wrong for Harry. And critically, Harry mostly doesn't complain about that he would be quite within his rights to go, you know what, I'm 12. You guys bloody sort this out. I'm going to go and play. But he never does. He struggles nobly to overcome unfair odds, and that is empathy gold. This is really critical too because stories about victims don't work very well either. If you have a story about a beneficiary of your organisation where they don't take active agency on any level, where it's basically your organisation comes in and saves the day, there's not a lot of empathy in that. I want to know how the protagonist worked, struggled to overcome odds. If you helped them in the process, yeah, that works. Okay, there must be a tangible goal within the story that the protagonist is striving to accomplish. And this is really, really useful for us because it helps us to define the boundaries of where the actual story we're telling sit. Um, biographical storytelling on any level can be cumbersome because which bit do you tell? Where does it start? Where does it end? Right? I'll look at this in further detail in a second. I'm going to take you through um, a piece of um, fun a fundraising video that I worked on and we'll look at that in detail. For the resolution, how the protagonist feels at the end of the story, the residual resolution emotion, as, as, um, as it's called, determines how we feel and thus how we act. 
There's a really important thing here from Kendall Haven's research is they found there are two general types of um, residual resolutions, emotions, positive and negative. A happy feeling or a feeling of outrage, sadness. Negative resolution emotions are more likely to prompt action in an audience immediately. If I feel outraged at the end of the story, then I'm going to go click on something, sign the petition, do something. If I'm feeling positive, I'm less likely to act immediately, but what they're good for is they influence um, uh, beliefs over time. If you're in a field where you're doing a lot of advocacy work, it's very important to share positive outcome stories because they won't get me to donate, they won't get me to do this, but over time they help me to reshape the way I see the issue that you're talking about, for any of you in the room who do that. And critically, details. Details are the language of story. And this is harder than you think. This is harder than you think and people get it wrong all the time. I take people through exercises where I go, okay, spell out the picture for me in detail, take me into the scene, take me into the critical climactic moment. And what I get back is a bunch of conceptual statements and no detail and no images over and over and over again. It's an art form that humans innately had, but in our culture we've lost, I believe, because of broadcast media. Because audiovisual storytelling is really, really sophisticated and it does the imagining for us. And we have lost the art of oral storytelling, which is where I have to make a movie in your mind with the words that I choose. I would say to you, this is critical even if you're going, yeah, but we're going to make a video of the story. That's great. But if you do that and you haven't taken the time to figure out which are the emotional images of your story, then you are handing it over to a filmmaker to choose the images. And it's the images that do the work. You need to know what the powerful images of your story are before you bring the filmmaker in. So you can say, this is a story about this. The critical moment is this. We need you to capture that. Okay, so let's go into an example so you can see how I work with story in practical terms.